Welcome my friends to the first Ray of Survival of 2024. I'm up against Nara Nara, a vivid fan of Asian culture, as his uh, Discord name is in Korean, his motto seems to be here in Blaze Blue seems to be Chinese, and he also had a Discord bio in, in Japanese, which if I uh, understood correctly means that uh, he wants us to do the sad cat dance, and or just a cat dance, I don't think it's sad. sad. But I might be sad as I got hit a few times right now and he's putting off the pressure with Naoto and for those not in the know, the Naoto Kagura matchup is definitely in favor for Naoto because Naoto has such good tools all in all and he can he can completely run us over and can still zone us out too because he has those D moves that he can charge up and make them unblockable. As you saw there, he just dashed up and got into Enhanced Sway and dodged the attack and with that and still got 3.7k damage out of it. So he hits like a truck, he's super mobile and uh, he has all the tools to evade our attacks. Definitely a difficult matchup for Kagura, but not an uh, unwinnable one. None matchup really is for Kagura, to be honest. Because again, damage output, we only need a few hits. And like this, getting 3k from a careless air dash. It's very nice. Yeah, I jumped there and got clipped. Not that great after the wrecker. I'm still holding my ground here. But I'm a little bit too antsy. I want to fuff near all the time and get hit, get clipped by hits that I don't need. But on the other hand, then I at the very least got out there. And yeah, that burst made from him made complete sense. Again, Kagura bursting is very easy and rewarding. At this point, I should have uh, changed the combo direction. I thought I might get the side switch with the A orb, but instead, I could have just used B Fafnir and get the side switch. And now I didn't get it, but I still got the round after all with the classic uh, Naga. Hydra into Drake and yes with time you will also learn all the names from Kagura's moves because that's what we do here we call them by their not official name by the way by the what he shouts in certain matchups yeah again I got this last round but he's putting up so such a strong pressure here still fairly even right now but yeah, he clips me there, he gets the unblockable and uh, I decide to burst. And he's actually playing fairly patient for an auto. He got me with Sway there, so that's one of the big things about the matchup. That whenever we can commit to drive moves and we pull them out, then he can just Sway essentially. But of course he needs to, he the Sway could get baited. As in, we get into the stance, but don't uh, do a drive move. At the end of the second game, I was kind of surprised. I've never really um, heard much about Nara before. And in terms of ELO, we are also fairly e equal. He was a little bit higher than me, so that, that means I shouldn't be on my high horse that I was on. At this point, I decide to take the A Orb Oki instead of uh, this Fafnir damage. And actually, nice conversion. It's a blue beat, but still doesn't matter at the end. Sadly, no Linvum punish. That would have been godlike. And that was such a bad Fafnir for me. Just, uh, yeah, I could have just pressed any button, but not Fafnir. Just take my turn back and not get the. Uh, yeah, the reversal with the questionable knockdown. But at the very least, getting a knockdown is a huge buff from what we had in previous iterations of Blaze Blue. And at this point again, why did I jump back JC? Instead I could have just used 6B or anything, I believe, and counter and win the round. So, pretty devastating mistake for myself there. He drops a combo, gets a reset, that's also one thing that many people say about Naoto. Including a fellow Kagura player, uh, like a reformed Naoto, Red Bar, that he wins by 
uh, messing up. Or he doesn't say that directly. I think Maho says that directly, but Red Bar says that he switched to Kagura, Kagura because he doesn't want to get carried that much. But honestly, Naoto still, like, yeah, you, he is carried, but you also need the execution. Like, I think Kagura carries just as much, but only for different kind of people, for people like me who are good on the defensive side, but have poor execution. We get a character that can just leverage our strengths without really uh, factoring, factoring in our weak points. Speaking of weak points, execution, bang, I don't have such a good bang, but uh, th these kind of things happen and yeah, I just, I still want to grind him out a little bit just for the future, like in seven years or anything that he'll be at the same level that my Kagura is. But I don't play him enough and I didn't warm him up and um, yeah, against my enemy Mio Steels. He's a big inner pen player, that's why I uh, decided to go bang. So, and honestly, I'm glad I did. I mean, yeah, it always comes off as a little bit arrogant if you don't play your main. But uh, I like closer sets. And as you see, we are pretty even matched here. And that was actually pretty, pretty good anti air from him. But again, at this level of play, he still drops lots of combos. So do I with Bang. And yeah, this combo for example. It's not that super complicated. I don't try to hit any optimal. Just a challenge expert combo 10, which does about 5k. I mean, it's a little bit modified because I use a 6b, which is not in the challenge. But it still works that way and even does a little bit more damage. And so getting the guaranteed damage from 6b is definitely worth it in my opinion. Like no downside. Here, this 6 b is what I was talking about. I failed up with the the um, with the air dash. But yeah. As we can see, the same goes for Mio Steels, who also has uh, problems converting correctly. But all in all, I believe his uh, neutral looks a lot cleaner than mine. With Bang, I'm just a little bit happy that I get. Uh, some six C's in. And here the delayed uh, Phoenix Palm Thrust hitting him. And I go for the combo here, uh, for the distortion drive here. Again, so much damage left on the table. I'm sure of it. Actually, nice back uh, jump barrier block for me. And of course, I'd like to talk a little bit more about what Mio Steos does, but again, um, not an Hazama expert, so it's difficult to give any kind of really helpful advice. Like, <laughs> the only advice I can give is get your combo confirms. Because that seems to be your biggest weakness right now. But uh, a thing that I noticed that he did very well in the match is that um, that he mixed up, uh, that he mixed uh, three his stance low and his stance high quite expertly because I got hit all the time by it. He wasn't really falling into any kind of pattern that I could recognize. So that's great. And also here um, you will notice especially with Bang that that I'm a lot weaker when I'm facing the, to the left side because I am super inconsistent with doing lots of stuff like TK Musasabi and Phoenix Palm Thrust. So just like a simple DP motion is actually giving me problems when I'm facing the left. And that's of course not really the sign of an experienced and great player. And not uh, not really uh, the sign I'm still a little bit unworthy to carry the load that is playing Bang. But uh, to be honest I'm kinda... Uh, I'm kind of tired of hearing all the downplay from bang players. Like this character has weaknesses, of course, but he also got great strengths. So no point in in whining about anything. Like yeah, not every character can be and should be like an S or a nine or any kind of those top slash high tier characters um, or a Hazama, you know. 
can just be a good game. Uh, yeah, you can. If you're a good enough gamer, you can still make pretty much any character and place work. That's saying something. Okay, I've got a little bit sidetracked here. I'm sorry, Mirosteus. If you're rewatching it and trying to get helpful advice, I believe I can't give you that much. Which, of course, also is uh, partly due to the fact that I'm fumbling a lot with Bang, not really knowing what I'm doing. So it's even uh, more difficult to say, yeah, you did this wrong and you did this wrong, because I didn't know what I did wrong and what I did right, so... But yeah, if, if there's two advice that I can give you, it's actually really uh, not not get hit, yeah, the classic advice, but no, not get hit by 3C. Maybe being a little bit more airborne, I've sometimes played against uh, opponents with Bang where I never really hit an, any 3C, no, no matter how much I fished for it. And I got quite a few of them off against you. Of course I dropped the confirm all the time, but uh, yeah, if that would have been a better Bang player, then um, all those uh, five C's would have been, as uh, three C's I mean would have been like 5k. I mean probably not all, but yeah, a lot of them would have been 5k. Just because if you have meter and stuff, and I believe good bank players can probably even hit m way more than 5k there. Actually the first time in this uh, set that I confirm, I mean that I get a full combo down. No, it's not the first time, but it's like it feels like the first time. The first time. It's not even the BNB from Bang. It's just uh, I believe challenge combo, challenge expert combo one. So far from it. The BNB includes a uh, uh, poison nail into micro dash five A. And honestly, the thing is, I think micro dashes, ma micro dashes are difficult on their own, but doing that with the correct nail timing in the air and stuff, of course, adds so many layers even. Like you've seen that I'm not super consistent, but quite consistent with uh, flash kick confirms. And I also need a, need a micro dash there. And again, sorry Mio Steos for not being able to provide any great advice for you there. But yeah, maybe somewhere down in the future with Rahab review or anything. Let's see. And next up I was against Zeke and there's a funny story. So Zeke was playing he uh, healing potato before this. So, uh, and I was joking in the chat. So um, like, potato, you have to win this. I don't want to fight you. Just because I dread the Amane matchup. But of course, the moment I typed that in, I was like, okay, I don't want Zeke to win either. So. <laughs> Because Zeke has uh, defeated me quite a few times to, in turning right now, and I believe those are all on on me as well. I'm not sure we might have faced off before that too. But yeah, very strong player and uh, Europe's strongest uh, platinum. Used to be a Hakuman player, but now that uh, now he considers himself a platinum player. Actually, that's cute that I can do that, but still, um, clashing is not the best. I should really learn to um, disassemble the counter because it does a lot actually in this matchup. But as I speak this, I get the first round, and um, actually, quite well so far. So I'm noticing Zeke is using lots of. Um, how is it called? Um, uh, dash pressure, I'm for I forgot the name, but yeah. Stagger pressure, thank you. Um, <laughs> in this matchup now it's we've we're in somewhat of a zoning zone and Zeke wins this. And with the presence, one thing that I notice in this set I can actually hurt him just like Rachel's frog, like George 13. So that's quite useful. And that is such a mimi but effective combo and it uh, seals around just because he's an active 
No, because he's in uh, overdrive and of course distortion drives get uh, enhanced there. So yeah, starting very zony here. Actually the nice thing about uh, A-Orbs is, is with against Poi Poi, so those uh, ring items that Platinum can have that they last longer than those. But of course at some point, maybe it already happened, um, you also extend your hurt box so you might get clip yourself into it. And here is standard uh, confirmed for Kagura, so if you didn't know, the most standard overdrive route is 3C or 2C and then overdrive into Sirish Dahaka and then just do the super. And that's very consistent, very easy to use. Depending on your routing before, you might prefer to use Wyvern or anything. But for the most part, uh, Sirish and um, and the Haka are very rare in routing, so they are for the most time parts the best. And here, I believe you could um, you could punish her overhead attack. I believe Mummy Circular, but I'm not sure because see, she has another the B version of the move. It's also called Mummy Circular. I'm not sure. But yeah, here gets me with it again. It's an overhead and it can sometimes cross up. That was how it hit me the first time. Just hitting Linfoom inside the stagger pressure, such a risky move. Here getting hit by the hammer projector. I think it's air unblockable and I didn't uh, use it in the air, but maybe it's even um, completely unblockable because it's an uh, because it was made stronger. Linfo misses, but again, I'm a Linfo enjoyer, I have to test my luck with the move. And just like that, getting the first round of the second game. Time really flies here. I hardly get in <laughs> what we are seeing here right now, getting distracted quite a bit. Yeah, again, nice stagger treasure. This pressure. I avoided the bubble there quite well, I have to say. And here I baited a response, which was nice. Very agreeable burst. Again, 5k. But the nice thing about Kagura, of course, if you if they burst, they don't have the burst again. Here I cut the sh uh, combo short intentionally to catch them with Drake. So the comment drag, uh, comment grab. But they were ready to jump out. They were so ready to jump out. And as you see, <laughs> I tagged too late. And now this one gamble that I did probably costs me the round. I believe it does. I'm not sure if this combo killed. No, it doesn't. doesn't. But yeah, I'm on a pixel. They have a lot more health, or at least a little bit. Yeah, I think here it is. <laughs> I used uh, A orb because yeah it would cancel out Poi Poi, but it ex extended my hurt box and then I got hit, which was tra which is tragic. But yeah, it's not that bad to, because I still got the uh, match advantage. Like I got one match, one game, one, and he doesn't. So we would go even if he won the second round here. But of course I still have a opportunity to also win this round. Sirish. Also, it's, uh, it's uh, clipping characters way too often, Sirish, because I believe at this point there's no reason for you to do anything other than block low. Because I can't follow up with a high, but yeah, I take, I take the set and I was so happy. I literally uh, screamed through, screams the entire time. I popped off really hard. Let's just put it that way, and yeah, uh, Zeke wasn't on his best, of course. He also lost to uh, Potato at that day, so yeah, early uh, early cap out for him. He said he wasn't playing that much recently, but hey, we don't we don't deal with those excuses. Next up, I'm against Ignis, uh, an Arakune player who was once in Pen, just like me, but of course way later in Pen than I was, because yeah. If you don't know, I'm 
I'm just gonna brag. Um, I was the first pen escapee ever, but the pen of course is not that old of a concept, so still kinda cool. But yeah, with Ignis here, he definitely has the um, Hakuna gameplay down, as you see, already cursing me. And the problem is, I mean, everyone knows this by now, but if you're a viewer who was completely new to the Blaze Blue and somehow made it this far into the video, Rakune definitely hated for being a character who plays his own game. Because, yeah, he just curses you and when, you, when he has the curse on you, then you essentially have to block, but there's no way you can block, uh, block everything. So of course there would be several ways to balance it out. From a game developer perspective you could last make cursed last less long or you could just make it so that the cursed gorge takes longer to build up so it feels less um, less punishing. Because at this point you can sometimes get this from a single combo. So what I try to do with Kagura here of course is kill him before he can get me cursed. Because yeah, curse snowballs very hard. And in this round I'm actually doing a good job of that. Like I've still got full uh, HP. But this is what we talk about. Like I only got a little bit of curse on me when he started that combo and then he just fills the entire bar up. And for... And like for getting hit with one combo, which should have been 2, maybe 3k, he gets 3.5k and another 1.5k afterwards. That is why he's considered a top tier. Like, no matter how good of a character you are, you can't outperform Arakune in Curse. And, uh, yeah, that's why he's so hated. Just in short, like, not much you can do about it. But, in terms of matchups, not the worst top tier for Kagura. Because he has to build that Curse, and in neutral we are actually doing quite well. Like, you see... Arakune can also get in, but he can have difficulty to um, maneuver so around some of our tools like Bifafnir and uh, Wyvern at times. And of course we've got the funny orbs too. Yeah, Bifafnir. Bifafnir would have been even better, but yeah, we take what we get. And another Wyvern. Yeah, the, that cloud has different uh, patterns, so at this point it's following me and I try to, at that point I have to kinda try to evade it all the time and try to get to a raccoon and hit him as quick as possible, because that's definitely the most difficult mode to avoid for the cloud. And yeah, now for example it's following him which is way easier to avoid, of course. Especially for a character like Kagura, who doesn't need to get close to attack. Or at least not get too close. Definitely would look probably a lot better for Zonas even at that point. But yeah, Cloud it was in the, um, in the air and was no problem at all. This is definitely the least difficult to avoid version of the cloud when it sticks to the air. But now it's following me again and I get hit by the spider which also builds up so any kind of insect builds up the curse gorge on the lower right. I'm not even sure like I'm super bad at reading kanji so uh, I would say this is kaku like status but uh, Maybe it's completely different. Yeah, but this is why what I mean why the matchup is not too bad. Like this time I could kill him before he could curse me. And then everything is easy. Just getting that simple confirm. That simple overdrive confirm I told you earlier. Ifafnir. Ifafnir is here to save the day. And yeah, he got the bad cloud pattern but that's also something that's uh, fairly cheap about him and that would be cooler if they would uh, in future iterations if there were any 
if they would patch that out that he can uh, respawn his cloud to change the pattern because then whenever he gets a bad pattern like this one then he could just uh, yeah, re re-establish the cloud actually quite a, kinda difficult to get out there like Arakuna doesn't have a DP, yeah, yeah, he has some movement tools he can use and I believe we will see them later in the set, if I remember correctly. And yeah, also for the time I'm recording this, it's on the same day the tourney took place, so 6th of January, but way later, so already went for a jog and all that stuff to process things a little bit. Haven't thought too much about anything so of this just was uh, not amused what the, uh, what uh, the post services that uh, did but yeah classic Arakuna round so far but hey we survived the curse so that means we still have a chance but yeah the chance doesn't really help if we get clipped by anything so yeah uh, last game last round situation yeah, we are, we, we are in for some good games. Like, those were really exciting today. And as you can tell from the title, I did fairly well again this time. Always nice. So in that sense, the Hollow Knight as a tournament series uh, seems to bring me luck. Because last time was also on the Hollow Knight that had performed well. But I believe part of that is that uh, some of the toppest player, players like uh, Nessica and Serpanda seem not to take part in this. And uh, Rakvim was there, but he secured himself fairly early on. So yeah. And there I dropped the combo that was so bad. Could have had it. I mean, probably not quite, but almost like you know now i have to play neutral again against arakuna he almost got me on curse but yeah 16 wyverns let's go wyvern is the best move ever you can't convince me otherwise like it's so rewarding to click it's like it's the ultimate power move and we are back against nara as you can see by all those uh, weird signs but this time he decides to take uh, to play Terumi, and at first I thought like yeah maybe he wants to um, uh, he wants to style on me and play some other character because he don't doesn't take me serious. But I think it's quite the opposite because this late in the tournament we are both in losers at this point. Uh, he just wants to win and plays the character he is more comfortable with, uh, which is definitely Terumi. And oh uh, yeah, I definitely want to focus on the gameplay side of things because Nara Nara did extremely well against me, to say the least. Like normally, to room players, I can brush them off fairly early. Of course, I've lost against Terumi, <laughs> so not that easily. But yeah, I feel fairly confident in the matchup. And here, I could have get gotten better combo, maybe even killed. So let's uh, pray that doesn't haunt me. So, very nice. Avoiding, he's just avoiding trying to let me come to him rather than hunting me down himself. But you saw there the big JD really hitting me out of stuff. Terumi's JD is actually pretty good in this matchup. You have seen that even more against Ter uh, Terumi. But here again, also JC, those 10,000 um, dagger attacks, also very good. Also got his combo down. One thing though that he, what he was missing in this set was um, checking my forward rolls. So I can got a. Um, around them fairly easily yeah no punish on my side that was bad again again I need to get a lot better with punishing stuff and that was such a good OD 
essentially whenever Kakuga does any drive move OD and you're golden. And if you make a count like he does and get uh, a pretty optimal combo, well, honestly I don't know if this is optimal, I don't know to roomy stuff, but uh, yeah, 5k at the very least and a combo that kills, any combo that kills is always optimal in my book. Um, even though I said otherwise in the Rahab review video. But yeah, very, very early on. And uh, that JC was supposed to be Kadamos, like that. But yeah, run up J uh, 6C Kadamos isn't that easy, to be honest. Often I set up. And it's interesting choice from him not to immediately burst out. Because, yeah, he wanted that for the overdrive robbery, because that's something that uh, Turumi definitely has. So, in that sense, very smart. Here I wanted to contest, <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing with him and other characters as well. Pressing OD after you done your super. And actually not respecting that option cost me the first game. And that was very huge for momentum, as you will see now. So yeah, using JD to uh, to contest my buttons if I did press any. Here again, JD from a high dash point, uh, from a high jump. Getting a combo again. Yeah, but he was aware that I wanted to dash uh, roll forward, so he stood there, but he didn't uh, confirm perfectly, of course. Roll catches are difficult somewhat, so yeah, I'm not doing them any better than him, to say the least. But here he just keeps me locked in the corner and gets a match that is close to a perfect. I'd like to go into more play-by-play, -play, but honestly... Uh, I wouldn't know that much anyway. I can just say again, the JD is godlike in this matchup. Like how many times he has clipped me here and I want to jump out and his 6 C hits me. Also I'm... That was also a very nice attempt but I, I'm not sure if maybe his timing was wrong but yeah. And while I say this I wasn't ready for as a rapid cancel uh, air dash JC from him. And here again, just letting me stay in the corner like I booked a hotel. Kinda uh, bad here. Nice rapid, but instead of going for the obvious, he just jumps and gets a high end. And another rapid. I wasn't sure he had the meter, so I thought, yeah, let's go in and punish that. But yeah, I, I was too greedy and he got me for that. That loss marks the end of Way of the Wild in episode 14 and my tournament run at the Hollow Knight 1. And yes, it shares the same name as the last one. Consider it a reboot. I got 5th place this time, so all in all I am happy with my performance, especially about the W against Sieg and Ignis. Make sure to check out the Hollow Knight Discord or Challenge so you can enter the next installment. It is actually a League style event where the winners of each tournament as well as partnered events, those being Salty EU and Blaze Blue EU Open Regrown, face off. As the Bnui for life, I highly recommend checking out the Blaze Bnui Weekly by Maho Shoujo as well. With all that said, tell me which set was your favorite in the comments, leave a like and subscribe. See you in tournament or the next video. Until then, bye bye.